being afraid and doing it anyway. Oh my God, I really just did that. I literally think about food 24 seven. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kevin and here at The Rational Eater, I am making eating disorder recovery simple. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and if you wanna speak with me, there is a link in the box below. Today, I am talking about Roe Mitchell. I'm gonna be a little positive this week. I've been quite critical the last few episodes. So this week I'm taking a different direction. Don't worry, I'll be critical in future episodes. That's coming back soon. But today, I wanna to talk about Roe Mitchell's anorexia recovery. She's been getting crazy amounts of attention and views. I'm gonna explain why I think she's getting that amount of attention. And I'm going to discuss some of the things that she talks about in her videos. I looked at five different videos that she's made over the last six to eight months. And as a disclaimer, I have not watched all of her videos. So if there's something that I miss about her background or there's some detail I don't know, forgive me. Remember, this is not medical advice. I'm not a psychotherapist. I'm not a counselor. I'm just a guy who had eating disorders and helps people recover from them. That's it. This video is for entertainment purposes only. What can Roe teach us about anorexia and eating disorder recovery? Let's take a look. Tell how my body feels. So like following my hunger's just kind of been really hard. Uh when you have an eating disorder for a prolonged amount of time, you become disconnected from your hunger. You don't recognize normal hunger cues. You're not sure if it's mental hunger or physical hunger. You're always questioning yourself. You're overanalyzing yourself. You've become disconnected from your body. You've, you've been ignoring your natural signals for so long that you don't recognize it when it actually occurred. It takes time to recalibrate your brain when you've deliberately been overriding these signals for as long as she has and I don't know how old she is I'm guessing 18 19 I don't know she said she got an ED when she was about 14 or 15 that's when she was formally diagnosed so let's just say five years five years is a long time to ignore your hunger signals so it's going to take time to come back no, no, on top. Okay. Come on. banana bread and peanut butter that's a great combination she says she's forcing herself to eat it and sometimes that's what you have to do because your brain is giving you so much resistance. And part of recovery, in fact, a big part of recovery is just saying yes when you wanna say no and vice versa. It's doing what your brain doesn't want you to do. It's facing the fear and moving forward. Peanut butter used to be a massive fear food of mine, but I've actually challenged it like repeatedly over and over and over and over again. And, I and she's also challenging her fear foods. Peanut butter is a big fear food. Why? Because it's a lot of fat, that's why. When you are in that state, whether it's anorexia or orthorexia, or you're just a chronic dieter, you fear fat. Anything with fat is off limits. At one point in my orthorexic stage, I was only eating like 10 or 15 almonds a day, and then everything else was fruit, vegetables, nuts, and bread. There was very little fat in my diet. I never ate peanut butter until I became a binge eater. Then I started eating peanut butter, probably too much. But good for her for facing her fear foods push myself so much. I've pushed myself every day this week. And you have to push yourself. You have to keep going. It's really easy to quit. This theme comes up repeatedly in her videos where she wants to quit. She doesn't want to do this anymore. Her brain is telling her to stop and she keeps going. It's kind of like being a runner. You're running, I don't know, 20 miles and you're at mile 15 and you just want to quit. The key to being a great runner is to force yourself to keep going. And that's what you have to do in this kind of recovery. Whether it's anorexia, binge eating, bulimia, whatever, you just have to keep going. Avoid the temptation to go back to day one and start over. Challenge myself in other ways. I ate with my friend, lunch and snack. Most anorexics don't like eating with people. They always feel like eyeballs are on them, they're being judged, somebody's gonna make a comment, so they just eat in isolation. In fact, most disordered eaters don't. If you're a binge eater, you usually do it alone. If you're a bulimic, you definitely do that alone. But she's now eating friends, which is a good milestone in recovery. Can you go out, can you be with people and still be comfortable? I don't know if she's comfortable actually. She might not be, but she's still doing it anyway. Potatoes, another fear food, just a lot of starch. So anything with a lot of starch is a fear food. There was a period in my life where I never ate potatoes. Now I think they're the best foods overall for eating disorder recovery. That and like protein, any, any sort of protein. But potatoes, awesome food for recovery. They're very satiating, they're very, very filling, very nutritious. But her mind is saying, don't eat potatoes. They're filled with starch. They're gonna make you fat. They're gonna make you gain weight. And nothing is more terrifying when you're anorexic or orthorexic than weight gain. That looks like a really good nosh bowl. Nosh bowls are the best. It's just a bunch of different vegetables. I think she has like sweet potato and beets 
and they're, I, I don't know, I'm not looking at the video right now, but it looked like a really good Nosh Bowl. I finished my Nosh Bowl. I'm quite proud of myself for that. because. You have to celebrate these small accomplishments, even if it's eating a small bowl of vegetables or a nosh bowl or a, I don't know, a pokey bowl or whatever. You have to celebrate all those little milestones. Don't just think about all of recovery, you know, the whole thing. That's too much. It's like when you're running a marathon, you need to celebrate each mile that you pass. Don't just think about the finish line. Think about mile 13, 14, 15. Celebrate the small things. They add up over time. I think people underestimate how exhausting having a brain is. <laughs> like, it doesn't turn off. Yeah, your brain is kind of exhausting, isn't it? How many thoughts go through your head each day? 10,000? I don't know. There's probably some number, some study that figured that out. But your brain is always on. It's always thinking. Even when you're sleeping, your brain is going. You're not conscious. You don't know what you're thinking, but you're dreaming, right? And then when you're going through recovery, it's telling you stop, 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 stop. And it's giving you all of these conflicted messages. The top part of her brain is saying, keep going. The bottom part is saying, don't do this. This is scary. This is a threat to our survival. That must be exhausting. And you see her looking exhausted throughout these videos. I mean, just like mentally exhausted. Obviously she's physically exhausted because she's been anorexic for several years. The constant voice in your head, that is exhausting. That I actually thought it would help me move away from using the scales. It's probably a good call. Don't use the scale. If you have a history of abusing the scale or obsessing about a number, you probably should put it away for a while. I don't think forever. I think there is use for a scale when you're trying to measure things. It's very easy. It's just a big number. I don't recommend getting rid of the scale forever. I still use one, but at this stage, probably not a good idea. I know in my um, six month recovery update, I kind of touched on comparing yourself to others. But it's so hard not to compare yourself. I think our brains just do that. We're always looking at other people and what they have. It's just a natural thing. Our brains always like to compare. Are we doing better? Are we doing worse? My patients always ask me that. Am I doing better or worse than your typical patient? It's like, I don't know. It's like, focus on yourself, focus on your lane, focus on daily improvement. What can you do today? I am not going to actually use this as an excuse to not challenge myself. Here's the thing about excuses. You will always find excuses. You will never want to recover. You will never want to keep going. But just because you don't want to doesn't mean you shouldn't. A lot of times you have to do what you don't want to do. Sometimes you have to sacrifice today for tomorrow. You have to feel some pain now to feel a sense of accomplishment later. That's how you got through school. That's how you got a job. That's how you accomplished anything. You had to say no to something good today so that you could say yes to something better tomorrow. So I got a smoky seitan sandwich, which is actually here. Look at that. Seitan? I haven't had seitan in so long. I can never find it. Maybe it's more popular over there in Britain, but if I ever find I'm gonna have some, it just has a very nice texture. It does have soy and it does have gluten, so just be careful. But that's really good for her, you know, seitan sandwich. She's so used to having a salad. I mean, what orthorexic or anorexic doesn't have a salad? Salad, salad, salad. Uh, the fact that she's having something different and she's going outside of her comfort zone, another sign of genuine recovery. I mean, guys, recovery is not easy. Recovery is not easy. Nobody ever said it was easy. And if they told you it was easy, Maybe they never went through recovery because it's never fun. It's never exciting. It is kind of mundane. You're making mistakes. You're trying to figure things out. It's like going through school. It's like going through boot camp. It can be frustrating. It can be long. You can have setbacks. You're never sure if you're going to recover. What do you think I was thinking on year seven, eight, nine, ten 10 of my eating disorder? Like, is this going to be the year? Is this going to be the year? It was exhausting. And it pains me to think about how much time and energy I spent trying to fix this problem. That I chose to go all in. And she said she went all in, but I don't think she went all in like our good friend Stephanie Buttermore did. I think she went all in mentally. And that's really good. You need to go all in mentally. This needs to be a priority. You need to emphasize your recovery. You need to say, I'm gonna do whatever it takes to recover from this. Because each day you have this disorder is another day of lost life. This disorder is robbing you of your life. You can't get that time back. So how many days do you wanna deal with this? I do not compulsively exercise anymore. Avoiding compulsive exercise, that's so hard because that voice in your head is saying, exercise, 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 because we gotta burn it off, burn it off, burn it off. It's just a cycle. You eat something, you think you've eaten too much, 
And if you're an anorexic, if you eat anything, you've eaten too much. If you're a binge eater, you know you've eaten too much and, and you think, I've got to do something to correct this. I've made videos before about compulsive exercise. You can go back and watch those. But that is a very powerful and loud voice in her head right now. I fuel my body. I can be strong and I can move. Go now where I went cold turkey one day and was like, I need to stop counting calories. Well, I it's hard to not count calories. Once you know calories, once you know density, once you know the calories and the foods that you eat, it's hard to pretend that you don't know them. And it's so fast and automatic. And here's a confession. I still do it to this day. Even now, I don't think it's a behavior, not a behavior, but I don't think it is a process that will never go away. I've done it so many times, it's so easy. It's just really hard to break. But you know what? It's not debilitating. It doesn't take over my life. So I don't know if she'll be able to do this. She says she's gonna do it cold turkey. That's even harder. I wish her luck, but not counting calories is not the definition of recovery. So I don't think she should worry about this. Does that mean that my brain stopped being a mental calorie calculator? No, that's something you have to unlearn. Exactly, it's still a mental calculator. It just, it keeps going. You eat an apple, it's like 100. You eat a banana, 100. It's so fast and so automatic. This might be a chronic thing for her. And I've realized what anorexia was doing for me and what it was blocking out and what I was running away from. And that is a really shitty part of recovery. She was running away from something, but we don't know what that was. Was it something in her life? And again, I don't know her whole history, but when you have an eating disorder, it is a nice distraction. You have this enemy, you have this goal year after year after year. It's like, I'm gonna beat this, I'm gonna beat this. This is gonna be my New Year's resolution. And it just gives you like purpose in life. As horrible as it is, as debilitating as it is, it is familiar. And a lot of times our brains will choose familiarity over recovery. Okay, anorexia is a coping mechanism and it's a bit one. It is a coping mechanism. All eating disorders are, but for what in this case? What is she running away from? What is she coping with? Or what does she not want to cope with? That's what I want to know. I haven't had a life for so long and I don't want to waste more of my life. Any eating disorder is a waste of life. Every day you're de dealing with this is a waste of your life. So the sooner you start that recovery process, the better. You can't go back in time, you can't get that time back, and it is the most valuable thing you'll have. You can't buy time. Money can buy options. It might be able to buy happiness, but it can't buy time. That was definitely me setting myself up for more than I can manage, so it's fine. What and she's starting to learn some of her limits here. You have to do this during recovery. What am I capable of doing where I am now? And you have to gradually expand what, what I call that envelope of function. What can you possibly do? What are you capable of? Can you be in social settings? Can you go to a party? Can you have this food? Can you have that food? Can you eat three meals a day? Can you eat this meal? Can you eat the whole thing? All of that. And she's constantly testing her limits and you have to do that. And sometimes that's scary because you're not sure. This could lead to an episode. This could cause me to restrict. This could cause me to binge, but you don't know until you actually try it. Do I feel like I want to eat food right now? And if you're thinking about food, then you probably are hungry. And if food is all you can think about, then you definitely are hungry as well. That this one, I'm not so sure about. Just because you're thinking about food doesn't mean you're actually hungry. Maybe at her stage, that's true. But how many times do you just think about food, something that you want to eat, but you're not necessarily hungry? Again, she's going through anorexia recovery, so that might be a good guide for her. And obviously she needs to eat to restore her health. I get it. But if you're like a binge eater, a bulimic, anything else, or you're just a chronic overeater or whatever, just because you're thinking about something, just because you are fancying something, jonesing for something, I don't know which word you want to use, it doesn't mean you actually need it. It doesn't mean you're actually hungry. There is such thing as mental and physical hunger. You need fats and you need sugar. Well, if you don't have the protein, your muscles can't repair. And if you don't have the fats, you've got nothing protecting your organs. I also like that she has cheerleaders at home. She has her parents. I think her parents filmed this. Now, if my parents sat at my kitchen table and told me why I needed to have fat and protein in my diet, I would probably punch them in the throat. But Ro keeps her composure here. I think she's used to it. I think she's used to her parents. A good prognosis depends on having help at home. Whether it, it's physical therapy or it's anorexia recovery, having help at home, 
having a good social network, that is a good predictor of recovery. I need to not be scared of a croissant. So she just ate cereal and a croissant. Those are really big fear foods. Why? A lot of starch and a lot of sugar. It looks like she's having fun just eating these foods. I don't think she's having fun. I think this is truly terrifying for her. It's really hard to get inside the brain of an anorexic. I've never been full-blown anorexic. I've been orthorexic before. And I remember like spitting stuff out. I remember like looking on a box and looking at it like it was poison or something. I thought this stuff would kill me in a way. It was just, it was really crazy. I'm not in that state of mind, but when you're in that state of mind, you literally see this stuff as poison, as a threat to your life. She doesn't want to do this. I don't think she's really enjoying the cereal or the croissant. I think this is obligatory for her, but she's doing it anyway. Still my head is going, oh my God, you're gonna gain weight. Like that voice in her head is telling her not to gain weight. Don't gain weight, don't gain weight, don't eat fat, don't eat fat, don't eat this. Imagine having that voice in your head all the time, all the time. That would be so exhausting. But the only way to kill that voice is to do the opposite of what it's telling you to do. Recovery is always gonna be uncomfortable. This is why procrastinating or putting it off makes no sense. It doesn't matter when you do it, it's going to suck, especially at first. The only thing you do when you procrastinate, when you put this off, is you increase your anxiety and you increase the amount of time that you do this. You're just wasting your life. Get the process started. I don't care how sloppy it is. I don't care how many episodes you have. Make a decision, start the process now. Get a coach, get a support network, dietitian, therapist, whatever you need, but you need to start now. Recovery is not about eating without guilt. It's about eating despite the guilt. She probably feels guilt every time she eats. She probably feels like restricting every time she eats. So eating without guilt, that's gonna be a huge milestone for her. To be able to eat a meal and not feel these feelings and to just move on and not obsess about it and not think about all the calories you just ate, that's gonna take a long time. The only way to break that, the only way to kill that voice is to keep moving forward. Anorexia literally feels like a big black cloud in my head. And that's why she describes it like a cloud. It's just, her mind is foggy. She can't think clearly because there's just this constant voice. Imagine having a speaker right next to your ear all freaking day. How horrible would that be? There's no rules, there is no rules. I can just do it, I should just do it. All of these rules are made up. And this is what anorexics and orthorexics and all disordered eaters do really well. They create this Bible of rules. They don't make any sense. They don't really help. They don't make them healthier, but they create these rules to give them the illusion of control. Like I can't eat after this. I can't be, eat before this. I can't have banana with bread, blah, 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 blah. It is the illusion of control. And the one thing you don't have when you have an eating disorder is control over what you eat. That control is there, but you have to reclaim it. And something that I used to love is peanut butter. For lunch, I'm having peanut butter on toast. Peanut butter and nuts, again, anything that's high in fat, it's gonna be really hard for her. I remember I used to count my almonds. Yes, I used to count them like one, two, three, four. At least I was eating them, but don't count almonds. Oh my God, I really just did that. Again, another milestone. Celebrate everything, whether it's eating peanut butter or a few nuts or finishing a meal. Celebrate. Celebrate all of your milestones, as small and insignificant as they are. And the more I'm giving up control of portioning and everything, the more free I genuinely do feel. Portioning, this is another behavior, you know, measuring food, making sure it's just the right size. This is what anorexics do very well. You know, they take an apple and they'll cut it into 10, 15 different pieces. I used to chop mine and then I used to eat one piece at a time with a chopstick. Yeah, chopstick. So it would take me like 15 minutes to eat an apple. It was, it was crazy. But again, that was my state of mind. I have to forgive a previous version of Kevin but this is a behavior that she has learned and now she has to break it. This is the theme here. She's doing what she doesn't wanna do. She keeps moving forward. She does what's scary. She ignores that voice in her head because she knows that if she keeps doing this, 
you know, portioning food and counting everything, that voice is only gonna get louder. Like I kind of feel like everything opens up so much more, it's like I can actually do things. When you beat an eating disorder, you can move on to the next problem. But the next problem is going to be a better problem. You're always gonna have problems. Your life is never gonna be peaches and roses. Her life is not gonna be perfect after this. After she beats anorexia, she's gonna find something else. I don't know what that is, but it's going to be a better problem. The goal in life is always to upgrade the quality of your problems. One really like rogue rule I have, um, but it's actually quite common for people that suffer with eating disorders. It's like to get kind of obsessed with eating out of the same bowl or using the same cutlery all the time. I used to have really rigid rules too. I used to eat things in the same order. I used to have a really structured meal plan. I used to lay things out in a certain way. It was so ritualistic. And it had to be like this, and it had to look like this, and I had to like say a little prayer before it because I was so famished. I had to celebrate any food that I could get. At all, like anything chocolatey, it was just like, nope, not having that. I've already had something chocolate flavored today because I had mini chocolate Weetabix. Again, her brain says, don't eat the chocolate, sugar, fat, calories, weight gain, but she does it anyway. And it looks like she enjoys it a little bit. Another milestone in recovery is that you are starting to enjoy food again. When you're in anorexia or even orthorexia, you see it as the enemy, something that you just have to have. You see it as fuel, like an inconvenience, something that just makes you fat. I'm trying to get rid of the labels of unhealthy and healthy. And another habit is to divide foods into good and bad, healthy and unhealthy. Even the words processed and unprocessed, that's not a very good distinction because some foods are processed and they're okay. I have protein powder, that's processed, right? I eat a protein bar, that's processed. Flour, that's processed, right? Most foods undergo some level of processing. So these really black and white distinctions, they're not useful, but that's how disordered eaters think. This is good, this is bad, this is healthy, this is not healthy. My brain's like, you need to restrict tonight because this is an unsafe dinner. When you're going through anorexia recovery, you probably shouldn't deny yourself anything. You're not in a position to do that. If you're on the other end, like binge eating, bulimia, that's a different story. We'll talk about that in a different video. But right now, she just needs to restore some weight, restore her health, build a healthy relationship with food, eat some of these fear foods. That's what's going to serve her. She doesn't need to be worried about eating a whole foods diet. She doesn't need to be worried about a perfect diet. That's not important right now. Denying yourself anything is restriction, no matter how big or small it is. You're gonna be exhausted, but you're also going to have negative feelings one way or another. Whether you binge or purge or you don't, you're gonna have negative feelings. If you don't have an episode, you're going to feel deprived. You're gonna feel like there's a void in your life. Oh no, I'm missing out. If you binge and purge, then you're gonna feel terrible about yourself. You're not gonna feel good the next day. For Ro, if she eats, she's gonna feel guilty. She's gonna feel bloated. She's gonna feel like she's really heavy. If she doesn't, then she's gonna feel guilty for not doing what she needed to do. So you're gonna have bad feelings in life. Which bad feelings do you wanna have? and you're gonna feel exhausted one way or another, you might as well make progress on the way. Because the thing is, for years in my illness, I didn't actually believe that anything was wrong. I just thought everyone was kind of saying it. There was nothing really wrong with me. My weight wasn't that bad. And One sign that somebody has an eating disorder is that they're in denial. They don't think they have it. Everybody else knows except you. I was in that stage, I thought I was being healthy, I was running, I was eating a bunch of vegetables, but looking back, it's so obvious. But you just create this own world. I think that's the world Ro created for herself. She was in denial and then she got a diagnosis. Looking back, I think she sees what she did wrong. But when you're in that state of mind, again, state of mind, it's not so obvious. You think you're just being healthy. You think you're doing the right thing. Sometimes you need a slap on the face. And the reason it made me laugh is because I literally think about food 24 seven. She thinks about food all day because that's what she trained her brain to do. And attention is a big problem with disordered eating because so much of your attention is on this one thing. She has been restricting herself for so many years. That's why her brain is focused on food. She is starving. What else can she think about? You can't learn very much. You can't remember very much. Intellectually, she probably hasn't grown much in the last five years. I know that sounds harsh, but when you're constantly starving, you can't learn and retain information. You can't 
pursue any goals. You can't accomplish anything. It's like your whole life is devoted to this one cycle. It really is a debilitating thing. It's going to be the most painful process you ever go through. I don't know if it's the most painful process that you'll ever go through. It depends on your recovery. And maybe anorexia recovery is just a different beast. I don't know. But it can be long, it can be frustrating, and it's not always the most fun thing. Ever properly recovered. So deciding to go all in. Recovery is more than just eating a bunch of fear foods and having fun and restoring your weight like we saw in last week's video. It is a mental challenge. Most of recovery is a mental challenge was when I really started all in recovery. That was when I started going for it. That was when I was like, right, it's life or death. It's be miserable or be happy. I'm going all in. You have to have a level of urgency. So when she talks about happy or miserable, life and death, it indicates to me that she's really motivated to do this. Anorexics, disordered eaters, they know numbers very well. They know macros, they know calories, they know weights. They know too much. You know, they're a walking, calorie macro encyclopedia they're like those fanatic sports fans who memorize tons and tons of stats and they're like this encyclopedia of knowledge and that's kind of how disordered eaters are and you just you play with these numbers all day this is so hard it's like when you have an eating disorder especially hard days always come you just have to accept that it's part of recovery they're gonna come and yes there are hard days not every day of recovery is great it's not always linear sometimes you're going forward then you go back it's kind of like this what you want to see is progress over a long period of time you want to hit those milestones and for her that's eating peanut butter that's finishing a meal that's eating the chocolate that means she keeps moving even though she doesn't feel like it that means having friends over i think at one point she made dinner for her family and her brain was like no 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 don't do this those are milestones and if you're passing milestones like that that's a good indicator of recovery which means you need to keep going i really like rose videos they seem very authentic and genuine i think she spends a little too much time showing us the food that she's eating and showing us her life i think she could kind of like cut down on the time a little bit i had to watch several hours of her videos just to find these points but that's just that's just my complaint Maybe I'm wrong. I mean, she's getting a lot of views, a lot of engagement, a lot of people are watching this. And that's a good question. Why are so many people watching this? Is everybody watching this, like going through recovery? I don't think so. I think people like human interest stories like this. They like to see the struggle. They like to see the journey. They like to see this young girl struggle and finally reach her goal. It is a very captivating series. I really like it. I also don't think Roe is hiding anything. I don't think she's manipulating anything. I don't think she is pretending. She shows us what recovery really is. It's hard. And it's not just eating giant portions of food. I also noticed that in a lot of these videos, she's eating the food very slowly. She has a bowl of cereal. She takes like one bite at a time. Each meal is a struggle. Imagine if eating each meal was a struggle and your brain was screaming to stop. This is hard. And she's filming it. She's showing it to everybody. I'm glad it's getting a lot of engagement. I'm glad it's getting a lot of views. What do you think of Rose Recovery? Let me know in the comments below. Hope you found this video educational and entertaining. Don't forget to subscribe and check out my links in the box below. If you liked this video, I'm sure you'll like one of the other videos that you see on the screen. Click one of them and I'll see you there. And as always, eat the way you're designed to.